there are some people you find that tend to be lucky in a sense. It just seems like things always work out for them. They tend to have access to the best opportunities. Um, and sometimes you might think, oh, maybe they were born with a silver spoon or and sometimes maybe they're, they're not. There are some things you can do to increase your chances of getting lucky, basically. It's something I call increasing your surface area. What do I mean by that? If you want great things to happen to you, well, increase the surface area so the chance of great things happening. So imagine this, for example, imagine there's rain falling, right? And you want to collect water. Now, if you want, if you want water, if you want a large qu quantity of water, it would make sense to have a wide bowl and one that's deep enough so that when the rain falls, it can catch as much water as possible. Now, if you have only a small bowl, it can only carry so much and there's only, and if it's very narrow, there's only so much that can be caught with it. Whereas if you have a bowl that's wider and deeper, it means it can catch more rain and then over time also, it will go quite high as well. That's what I mean by increasing your surface area. I hope that sort of makes sense. But you might say, okay, fine, I get that. But what are the areas that make up my surface area and how do I go about increasing them? I'm glad you asked, let me tell you. So there, there are about five things I'm gonna mention in this, okay? When I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes, by the way. So there are five things I can mention that can help you with increasing your surface area. The first is the knowledge you interact with. So I say knowledge you interact with as opposed to solely focusing on books you read. I think it's very important to read or listen to books. There are many books in audiobook now, audiobook format. And for me, that's been the best way for consuming um, knowledge. I find I finish more books when they're in audio than when um, I have to read them either in physical print or in, in digital copy. But anyway, I read a lot of books about wide range of topics, but also things that I find inspirational, motivational, that help me with being more productive, that help me with being a better human being, help me with building my soft skills as well as um, my technical skills as well. But I don't just stop at reading. I I read whole books, but then I also listen to book summaries. So a service that could be useful for that is Blinkist. So Blinkist is an app where you can get many summaries of many, many books sort of thing. And usually the summaries are between 10 and 15 minutes. So in a sense, I could get in an hour, I could get the summary of four books. Now imagine if I did that five days a week um, times, let's say 50 weeks in a year. Okay, so five days in a week, 50 weeks in a year, that's 250 times. Now, if I read four books in each go, in each go let's just say, that's four times 250. That's a thousand book summaries. So knowledge from a thousand books in a year. And it's doable. That's pretty amazing, right? Um, so that's a way to increase your knowledge and increase your uh, capacity, the things that you, you know, the things you know. Now, the app can also give you different recommendations. So um, recommendations for things that are similar to what you've read as well as other topics. So I, th I think it's something I would definitely recommend and try the wildcard kind of thing, because then you can try and learn knowledge from different regions and from things you may not have thought or sought for, but could actually be very useful to you. So that's something there. The next is your environment, right? So if you live in an environment that's pretty remote, the chances of you having access to many opportunities are lower. It's just how it is. Now, for some people, and depending on your age, it might be harder to go out of your um, area, so to move somewhere else, but you can take trips outside of your area. Or if you're older and you actually have the opportunity to move, then maybe it might be worth considering moving somewhere, maybe in the city or closer to a city, somewhere where you can at least have access or regular access to areas that have a lot of opportunity. Um, so for example, I've, I've heard it said that a child, a poor child who grows up in London may have better opportunities than a similar child who grows up in a more remote town, just because within London, you're exposed to so many stimuli, you're exposed to so many people with different careers and different opportunities, um, are available within a small area that it means that the chances of you actually finding some of those opportunities are a lot higher. Okay. So that's your environment. Now, other things that make up your environment, the, are the place where you live, where you work, where you travel to, um, where you go to school and also, but an, another place that may be overlooked sometimes can be your online environment. So what forums, um, do you engage with? What groups do you engage with? Maybe on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, other pages, Quora, for example, um, what social media profiles do you follow? Again, these, this, these could act as a sort of virtual environment and provide you with some access to things that you may not have access to from where you live. Okay. That's something. And the next thing on the list is the people. 
So again, we're talking about surface area. How do you increase your surface area of great things happening to you? Basically, how do you get more lucky? Okay, so people. People is an important one. And people are, you know, there's a saying that goes, um, the difference between yourself this year and next year would be the people you speak to and the books you read. I've expanded that. I've expanded books to knowledge in general. But um, in terms of people, I would say, it's very important to be exposed to a diverse range of people, right? People from different backgrounds, whether it's different cultures or different family upbringings, uh, people maybe who went to different kinds of schools. Uh, so it's people who are homeschooled versus people who were schooled in state schools or people who were schooled in private schools. Having a mix, it kind of opens up your, it broadens your horizons because then you have experiences. You can in a sense, get, gain from some of their experiences and make it makes you a better rounded person or well rounded person because then you you have an idea of other experiences. Now, um, the people you meet. So when it comes to people, we're talking about the number of people you meet, the variety of people you meet. So the diversity there. Um, so diverse interactions broadening your horizons. Um, the people you spend the most time with. That also has a factor. So there's a saying that goes, "Show me your friends, and I'll show you what kind of person." you are if you are somebody who hangs out with wise people you'll probably be the fifth if you're somebody who hangs out with foolish people you'll probably be the fifth so that's something there um then there's also the concept of weak ties so weak ties are people who you don't necessarily have a close relationship to it's almost a tenuous relationship but then those people because they are removed from your usual circle of people they would be exposed to different sort of opportunities and those opportunities are things that you could take advantage of if you if you um, got to know them or if you got to engage with them in some way so it might be something like okay your teacher's husband's uncle something like that who may be who may work in an industry that you're interested in if you find a way to connect then you may find out more information and the person may be able to point you in the right direction of some things. Just the sort of thing I'm talking about. Um, weak ties, I should probably do another video just talking about that, but I have found in my life, um, weak ties have played a huge part, whether it be finding out about the voiceover industry, for example, and the weak ties there were literally, were very tenuous. They're literally watching YouTube videos of people who've done, who had done it and then learning from that or joining um, groups on Facebook and some other places and like some specific websites for voiceover where I was able to learn more and then take part in um, meetups to so online meetups that happen over Zoom, that sort of thing. So those are ways you can still engage with people. Then beyond that, you also, the question is, okay, how frequently do you meet new people? How often do you meet new people? Have you met any new people this year? That's something to bear in mind because um, again, we're talking about in increasing your surface area, so increase your exposure. Ways of doing this might be to go on sites like lunchclub.com or Clubhouse. Um, Launch Club is pretty good because then it you put in your interest and what you're looking to learn or find out more about, and then their algorithm matches you with somebody who would be a good fit for that. And I've met quite some really interesting people on that platform. Um, I'm currently looking at funding for a startup I'm working on, and I met somebody there who said, okay, he might be able to support or at least some, give some advice when it comes to uh, funding. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, then you can, your, the people as well, in terms of people you interact with and your surface area, also look at the communities you're currently engaged with and communities that you can engage with. For example, if you're part of a church or a religious group, there are people there who you can engage with who could potentially lead you to more opportunities. And then you could say, okay, you know, what, I want to try something new, which actually brings me to my next point, which is trying new things. So it's quite important to keep trying new things and keep trying. Oh, I don't know if the word is keep trying, but at least keep, at least expose yourself to things. So it might be maybe one month you decide, you know, I'm going to go learn to do something else. Maybe you are more into video games and you decide, well, you know, what, I'm going to try a sport or I'm going to try dance, maybe pick up salsa or kizumba, something like that. In doing that, you are exposed to another set of people who, of, of which the common interest is the dance or the sport, but then you're exposed to more people. That way and you get to build community and grow in another community, which could expose you to more opportunities that way. And finally, all of these things, um, one of the things that makes it even, makes these options I've given you, so the four so far, quite rich, is you sharing your ideas and your desires. So it's no good just having a desire to be something um, and 
going by going about it on your own and not telling anybody i mean you could try that and all the best with it but i would actually recommend speaking about it more so telling people that okay you know what i'm really interested in this if any opportunity comes up that you find out to do with this do let me know and i find the more you do that and the more you tell people about what you're interested in and what you do, the more it comes back to you. At some point I was speaking to people and saying, you know, I, I'm interested in this voiceover area. I'd like to learn more. Somebody who worked at a radio station got me to try out doing a few voiceovers for them. The first ones I did were not very good. Um, and he told me, told me as much that, okay, you probably need to improve here. But then I learned from that experience and then improved on that. Then even a simple one, actually, um, I just thought to myself, I'd like to visit other countries in Africa. I've been to a few, quite a few countries outside of the continent of Africa, but I actually wanted to, you know, get to see other countries in Africa and see what the vibe is like, you know, see, is it similar to the countries I'm used to, or is it very different? Or are they very different? And at some point I thought, okay, I was going to Nigeria, Nigeria I'm very familiar with. And then I thought, you know what? I'd like to go to the country next door, Benin Republic. I didn't know where I was gonna start with that. Cause it was like, okay, I was going on a budget. So where was I gonna stay? How much was it all gonna cost? Um, what, what was I gonna do there? And I just started thinking about it, but I started sharing it with people. And I kept telling everybody, that on this trip, I'm going to Benin Republic. On this trip, I'm going to Benin Republic. On this trip, I'm going to Benin Republic. So, and I just kept telling lots of people anywhere and everywhere that, oh, I'm in Nigeria, but I'm also gonna go to Benin Republic. At the point when I was telling people, I didn't know where I was gonna stay or if it was actually really feasible, but I kept talking about it. Then a cousin of mine linked me up with somebody else um, who he had done um, national youth service with in Nigeria, who was now living in Benin Republic. And I got talking with her and she was like, ah, oh, don't worry, she'll, she'll sort me out, whatever I need. I said, okay, I'm trying to find accommodation. She's like, okay, yeah, she'll look for them. And then she, Help me look around, but then actually proposed to me um, an option for accommodation, which actually worked very well. Um, she said, okay, she and her husband were gonna travel for a bit. So if I wanted, I could stay at theirs at a very reasonable, more than reasonable cost. And I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, sure. And it was really good to go um, with them because they were already well known at least to my cousin, which then meant, okay, there was some familiarity there and, you know, a bit more safety, you know, you know who you're staying with as opposed to somebody random on Airbnb. Could have done that as well, but I was quite happy to do that. And then they introduced me to other people when I got there. And then as I was speaking to more, more and more people, uh, my aunt who had had somebody stay over at her Airbnb actually told me, oh, there's this person um, she met who came from Benin Republic, really cool people, um, you should get to meet them. And so she linked me up with that person as well. When I got to Benin Republic, I met up with him. So it was just really good. And then just like that, I kept meeting people and eventually the trip came to fruition and ended up spending three weeks in Benin Republic and absolutely loved it. But you see, if I had not opened my mouth and told people of my desire to go, it would have been more difficult. I'm, I probably would still have gone, but then it would probably have been more expensive. I may not have met as many people as I ended up doing. So again, speaking out and telling people about what you're interested in, and particularly people you know you can help, but sometimes just cast your net wide and see what happens. The cousin I told, I didn't necessarily think he was going to know somebody in Benin Republic. I just told him just out of information, just catching up. And in the end, it worked out quite nicely. So that's an example of um, sharing my ideas with people in order to increase my surface area and increase the likelihood of something happening, something great happening. But I wanna go into a few more details about how you can improve your surface area in some of the topics I've mentioned so far. So, so far the five things I mentioned were increasing the knowledge you interact with, changing your environment, the people you interact with, the new things you try, and then sharing your ideas with other people. So let's look into more details on how you can actually go about expanding your surface area in those particular areas. So when it comes to expanding your knowledge, I mentioned reading books or listening to books and summaries, but there are other things you can engage with as well. You can engage with YouTube videos like this one you're probably watching on YouTube. Then you can also engage with um, podcasts. So video podcasts as well as audio podcasts on different platforms like Spotify, Anchor, um, all sorts. Then you can also um, watch things that expose you to things. So for example, you could watch movies from different countries or movies of different genres to what you're used to, but could be quite educational. Um, there are many, many ways you can expand your knowledge, but the important thing is don't just keep your knowledge to the area you're familiar with. Try out different things, expand into different areas and you know, you can learn from that. Next, I would say a brilliant way for expanding your horizons is travel. If you can, do it. Um, I've traveled quite a bit so far. I still, I'm still looking forward to traveling a lot more, but I found, I found that in traveling, I just met people with different backgrounds, different cultures, was exposed to different sights and sounds. And I was also exposed to different kinds of foods as well. And these are things that literally expand your horizons. You meet people here and there. So travel stories that I at some point studied in Brazil and 
I absolutely loved the experience. I was there for about four and a half months, I believe. And whilst there, I met a lot of Brazilian people, obviously, but then I also met people from other African countries, particularly Francophone countries, because um, there were a few of them who were on scholarship um, on the campus I was at the university where I was at. And so I just got to meet a wide range of people. And one of those people that I met actually um, also had a brother in Benin Republic. So when I went to Benin Republic, um, his brother um, came by to say hi and took me out with his family to go to some exhibition, which I really appreciated. But again, surface area, because I'd gone to Brazil, I'd met um, this guy from Benin Republic over there. He then introduced me to somebody in his country, which is, was his brother. So, you know, expanding your horizons that way. Um, and in Brazil, I got to learn um, the language as well. So I started learning Portuguese before I got to Brazil. And then when I got there, I increased my um, my knowledge as well. And in being able to speak Portuguese, I could actually reach out to people a lot more and then make even better friends. So, which I'm so, is something till today, I'm so, so grateful for. I'm looking forward to going back to Brazil another time, actually. Um dia, um dia, one day. All right, so we've talked about travel. Um, now when you, when you do go traveling, I would say, or if you want to go traveling, you can start small. You don't have to travel halfway across the world, right? You could start by exploring other cities, you know, maybe just somewhere an hour's drive, maybe just do a day trip sort of thing. And slowly you can increase and go further afield. Just do a bit of research, find out nice day, um, day outs or nice, um, day out adventures in, um, in your city or even in, in nearby cities. And then just go, if you can drive, drive over, drive across, if not take a train or a coach, um, and then just, just do it, just go explore. And you can start with simple day trips, you know, or, or a few hours and then expand that way. Then maybe go for a weekend, go for a week, different places. But then again, you travel, you explore, you learn new things, you see new sites. Um, it expands your horizons and you never know, right? Then another thing you could actually do for travel is actually tack on something to it. So it might be like you want to go for a conference that's happening in a particular city. So you travel for the conference and then maybe, maybe take a few days off um, on either side. And then that way you get to explore the city, but also meet people at the conference or at the place where you go to. So that's a nice way to, to do it. So you have a purpose for going to that place beyond just sightseeing. So that could be quite fun. Um, whilst you're away as well, talk to locals, ask them for their recommendations on places to visit, sites to see, foods to eat, um, and activities to get involved with. Again, expanding your surface area, that also gets you meeting locals as well. So definitely another way of expanding your horizons. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, move, as in not just travel, it may involve you moving location. So if you feel like there are places where you can go where you will have more access to something that you're interested in. Think about it. Maybe moving, as in physically moving yourself to a new location, um, moving your house, moving house rather to a new location might be a good option because then you go into the area where you're exposed to the area of your interest and then you can you can grow that way there are people for example who move to silicon valley because it's a start it's got a huge startup ecosystem right so um in being there it means that they're exposed to more things they're exposed to more conversations to do with startups and it can help with building motivation and it can also help if you're looking to work in a startup so that's just something to bear in mind next we have meeting new people i kind of touched on this when i was talking about meeting people but i'll go over it again so you can meet people on different 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 platforms so you can go for physical meetups so there's sites like eventbrite meetup.com and other sites like that that have different events also facebook has um, a few facebook events as well where you can go meet um, people in person and it'll be usually around a certain topic or uh, maybe a seminar or something like that but then you can meet people who um, you're like-minded with so that's something you could do then um, you can meet people online so through social media so engaging on Instagram, Twitter, that sort of thing. Don't be creepy, but you know, you can reach out to people that way. Or you could even have um, longer conversations with people, particularly with career interest or business interest by signing up to a site like launchclub.com. On that site, you'll be able to meet people who share similar interests to you and who maybe you can help or they can help you. So it could be good. And sometimes I just go with an open, open mind and open book in a sense, and just tell people what I'm interested in, what I'm involved with. I don't mind who I meet and just see if something happens there. Maybe I can help somebody or maybe somebody can help me. You never know. Good way to meet people as well is whilst traveling, try to engage with locals. All right, and trying out new things. Now this is the scary one, right? Because it takes you out of your comfort zone. You're like, ooh, do I know this? Will I look like, would I look silly trying out to dance sort of thing? But you know, it's worth it. Um, you get this new experience, you get a new skill in the process, you laugh as well, you have fun with people, all sorts. So it's something definite. All right, so trying out new things could be a bit daunting, but 
you could challenge yourself to say, okay, you know, I'm going to try new things, but I'm not going to push myself too far. Okay. So maybe try something new, maybe every month or every other month. Um, it could be try a few dance um, lessons, see how you find it. Try swimming for the first time. If you don't know how to swim at the moment, um, you could try different things. And once you find something that you're interested in, you could stick with it and stick with it for maybe three, six months, see how you like it. And if you continue liking it, continue growing with it. In that way, you're exposing yourself to more people, but then you're also trying out something new that you might enjoy and who knows where it might lead, right? I started off with voiceover as an interest. I was interested in creating voiceover um, stories from the African continent, particularly from Nigeria, because I felt I could deliver on them better than some of the stuff I'd already seen. But it took me trying it out and trying and failing sometimes. I mean, I remember doing a recording one time and I played it for someone. They were like, oh, um, your voice doesn't sound clear. And I was like, that's not very encouraging, is it? No, it wasn't. But I persevered, right? I kept going and now I do voiceovers for a living and I appreciate it. I enjoy it. Trying out something new, you never know where it could lead and what opportunities it could open you up to. The important thing is to try, right? Try it and do and do it, okay? Just keep going. You'll get there eventually, you know? When you try something new, you'll be surprised at what comes out of it. But yeah, keep going. Okay. And then the final thing, like I mentioned, keep telling people about the things you want to do and the things you're interested in. Post about it, put it on, put, if you see relevant articles, put them on LinkedIn, put them on, on your WhatsApp status, on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, you know, let people know you for it so that when an opportunity related to that comes up in the future, you'll be the first person they think about. And then people can share ideas with you. You're not going to see all the ideas available or see all the opportunities available, but people who might do can then share that with you. Wouldn't that be great? I think it would be. Okay. So in summary, right, um, this whole video has been talking about how to get lucky, how to get luckier, literally by expanding your surface area. So far, we've talked about five areas you could explore to increase your surface area. The first is knowledge. So um, increase the number of things that you're exposed to, the things you know, and um, the books you listen to, the, the videos you watch, the podcasts you listen to, that sort of thing. Um, then we've got your environment. So changing your environment if it's not suitable to it or going there, going to the environment that has the parts that, that has things that could be of interest to you and that could help you be exposed to a lot more things. Then we've talked about people. So expanding your horizons by expanding the diversity of people that um, you interact with. Then we talked about trying out new things. So being open to new experiences, whether it's travel, whether it's um, new foods, try things, try new things. And then the final thing we talked about, which was the fifth, was sharing your ideas and talking to people about the things that you're interested in. Okay. I hope these have been helpful to you. If you've stayed with this video so far, appreciate you very much. Go ahead and leave me a clover. It's green. Put that, I'll put the icon on the screen. But yeah, let me know that you've gotten this far and I hope it's beneficial to you. A bonus point I was gonna mention is that sometimes you think, okay, do I just go wide and then be a jack of all trades, a master of none? Actually, that saying goes, jack of all trades, master of none, but it's still better than master of one. But anyway, let's leave that for another day. What I would say though, is that sometimes you may think, okay, am I just spreading myself too thin going wide? I think there's a balance to be struck. Yeah, if you have an idea of something you wanna delve deep into, then good for you, go delve into it. And But even in delving into it, there are different ways to delve, right? You can delve by going to conferences, by reading more, by doing different things. So you can try things that way. You could also try divergent. Um, involvement or um, delving where you speak to people from different industries and see how those may actually link with the topic that you're interested in. So that's something you could try. There's a video I did some time earlier where I did a review of the book by Pat Flynn, how to get better at almost everything. And there it kind of talks about the difference between being a generalist and being a specialist. And then he talked about um, time bound or focused uh, specialization where you specialize um, in a certain skill or a certain area um, up to a certain point and for a sp specific time period. And then afterwards, you once you get to like 80% of the value you can get from that, you then move on to the next thing because um, you may not get as much value by increasing beyond that. So yeah, that's another um, video you could check out if you're wondering about the balance between going deep and going wide. Very, very, it was a very good book. It's a book I actually recommend you could go listen to, expand your knowledge. Huh? 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 Okay, anyway, I kid you. All right, let's end this video here. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and goodbye. Don't forget, expand your horizons, expand your surface area, and get lucky. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.